Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. In this video, I'm gonna take you through an bat of one of my hitters, but before we get there, I wanted to do a little bit of context as we look at the pitch sequencing of this particular pitcher. And I wanted to explain Perry Husband's effective velocity in simple terms. If you, if you look at this image right here in the middle of your screen, you got lefty righty and what we're looking at is perceived velocity or what the hitter sees the velocity of the pitch the 90 you see in the middle is what the radar gun says and if you take that same pitch and you locate it up and in the radar gun will still say 90 locate it down and away it'll still say 90. what this is showing is that at 90 middle middle radar gun says to the hitter's perception, when you locate that 90 up and in, it looks 95 to the hitter, plus five, plus six. So it looks faster because it's closer to the eyes. Now when you locate that same middle, middle 90 on the radar gun, down and away, it looks 85 or plus or minus five, minus six. One other image that to drive this home this is another image that is borrowing from Perry Husband. This is a catcher's infographic or a catching guru's infographic. And you can see the catcher here on the right side. This is for a right-handed hitter. So as the you see the catcher on this side, imagine the hitter on that side facing you, the pitcher. You looking at the screen, you're the pitcher. You got the catchers behind and the hitters on the right side where this catcher, this you can't see him. So you see here, just a little bit more in detail, from the other graphic, you can see located up and in plus four. Perry goes, I've seen plus four to plus six up and in. And then you can see how as it moves farther, as the ball location moves farther away from the eyes, you see the ball slow down. You see, again, this is a righty. You can see down and in as you go the opposite diagonals. You can see this diagonal that's coming down from the plus four, plus two, zero, minus two, minus four. That diagonal is the biggest diagonal from the hitter because you're going to see the ball in those locations are going to be closest to the hitter's eyes versus the farthest away. But if you look at the opposite X line, you're going to see zero, 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 almost a neutral ball position. So that 90, 90 in the middle is 90 in the black box up in the upper left quadrant. And then you got the upper, upper left quadrant is zero. So that whole line is neutral where we get the biggest difference in effective velocity or hitters perspective or perception is you see up and in taking that and following that line all the way down to down and away where you get minus four to minus six. Now let's take a look in just real time, this hitters at bat, this is the, I think it was a five pitch at bat. And we'll take a look, this is not the best view, but it's a pretty good view of, so we got swing and miss there. It looks like down and in or middle down, so 01 count. Looks like he went down and in again, 1-1. One, one. Looks like he went 12 to six curveball, missed up. Looks like he went fastball up in the zone, swing under. So we're looking at two, two count. And then looks like fastball inside, jammed him, fly out to left field. Now let's take this back. Again, with the this in mind, you saw a right-handed hitter. First few pitches ended up somewhere down in the down and in scenario. So you saw kind of a neutral plus one, minus one type of effect of the pitcher in the pitch sequence. So you saw first pitch. Maybe even bounced. Swung over the pitch. And then you got pitch number two. way inside and down. So you can see right now, this pitcher is in this zone where he's in the bottom inside zone. So zero plus one, minus one, even less than that, pretty far away from the hitter's eyes. So if you look at this, 
the pitcher so far has thrown pitches that have been far away from the hitter's eyes, which appear slower or neutral. Then the next pitch is where we get a little difference of eye level. This is the, looks like a 12 to 6 curveball. Up in the zone. Maybe a little bit away. For ball two. So we got 2 1 count. And then, so you're looking at that pitch is somewhere probably in the middle somewhere. So plus one, green, zero in the middle, minus one, minus one on the down and the away, plus one, maybe even more in, in on the outsides of outside of the plate there. So the next pitch is where we get a little bit of difference where he's pitchers been throwing somewhat neutral to far away from the hitter's eyes to get him to slow his eyes down. This is where we get on a two and one pitch. We get a fastball up in the zone and the hitter swings underneath it. The hitter has in the first three pitches has timed up a neutral. So whatever, whatever the pitcher's throwing, be it, I think it was actually 83 to 85, 82 to 85. He's working today. So that mile per hour is actually what this hitter was seeing. The first three pitches was seeing just around that mile per hour. This was the first time the pitcher went up and elevated, probably more middle up. So we're looking at kind of plus two, plus three, possibly. So if he's throwing 82, now you're looking 84 to 85. And even though it does on the radar gun doesn't show that, but the hitter sees that, he sees a ju just a jump in speed. And you can see this hitter just missed this pitch, just underneath it. Although if he was a little bit more on time, probably would have popped this up because he was underneath. And then you're gonna see even more, he's gonna get even closer to the hitter's eyes. So he's moving slowly closer to the hitter. So you're gonna see this, another fastball. Catcher's actually sitting up outside, interesting. So he made a mistake here, which makes me think maybe the pitcher, again, which you find in high school, and this hitter is going into senior year in high school, that you see pitchers don't have as much control over what they're doing. They know what they wanna do, but they don't necessarily do it. So it looks like this ran on the pitcher a little bit, did him a favor, because I could tell you with those last, with that last swing that this hitter took, if this pitcher would have hit a spot where the catcher's at, would have been a different scenario. Probably would have been a double to left center field. But the pitcher or the pitch ran in. I don't know if it was a two seamer. I don't know what it was, but it ran in. Did the pitcher a favor? Got into possibly the plus three zone, plus two, plus three zone, and caused the hitter to be late. You can see kind of where that ball's hitting right above the umpire's shoulder right here. You can see where that ball's hitting on the barrel. Definitely not on the hands, causing a pop-up, weak pop-up to left field or shortstop. So you can see here that pitchers make mistakes. And this particular pitcher didn't seem like he had much of an approach. Looked like he was just kind of staying away, just looking at the catchers where the catcher was setting up. But here's the deal. We cannot, as hitters, see pitches down and away, look away, and adjust in. It's almost impossible to hit both of those pitches hard. The goal should be to hit pitches hard consistently, regardless of whether they're down and away or they're up and in. To do that, you have to think about, Perry talks about the cornerback, the football analogy. If you have a pitch pitcher that is moving the ball up and in and down and away or down in the zone, up in the zone or in the zone, inside the zone or outside the zone. Then what you're going to have is a cornerback that's covering two wide receivers where one wide receiver goes a deep route and the other wide receiver does a 10 yard 90 degree cut inside. That cornerback is going to have to make a decision and a commitment to cover one wide receiver or the other. He cannot cover both. So that is, if we are trying to hit the ball hard, balls located up and in versus down and away, 
it's going to be almost impossible to hit both of those pitches hard with an adjustable swing. Now the reverse is true like this pitcher who is showing a lot of slow, slow, slow and if he would have gone down and away or even away like his catcher was asking on that last pitch, that pitcher literally was throw, would, have been, would have been throwing right into my hitter's barrel. Oftentimes, pitchers are taught to keep the ball down, to keep the ball away from hitters. But what that essentially does, especially with the fastball, is it creates a hanging fastball. The fast, it slows the fastball down. If we, again, we get back to this graphic, you got 90, you locate it down and away, it's 85. It looks 85 to the hitters. You slow it down. So if you throw a 90 mile an hour fastball down and away, it looks 85, it's slower, and say the pitcher's got an 80 mile an hour changeup but leaves it inside, maybe down and in or middle or up in the zone, then what, you're, what the pitcher's essentially doing is speeding up his slow stuff. He's slowing down his fast stuff and he's speeding up his slow stuff. So what happens is, like Perry says, that all hard hit contact or majority of hard hit contact happens within a six mile an hour effective velocity or EV differential. So if my fastball is looking 85, because I'm locating it down and away, like most pitchers are taught, and I'm loca locating my changeup, middle or up and in, plus four, inside, plus three, plus two, plus one, or up in the zone, plus one, plus two, plus three, most pitchers don't do that, or at least stay away from that. But let's say inside, middle, in, plus two. My 80 mile an hour changeup is going to look 83. It's going to look 82, 83, 84. So if my fastball is 85 and my changeup looks 82, 83, or even if I locate it middle, middle at 80, that's a five mile per hour differential. So what's going to happen is that pitcher is essentially helping the hitter out and throwing into his barrel. So what we want to do as a pitcher is move the ball from this diagonal. And what hitters have to do is we got to decide and commit what zone that we're hunting in. Make sure that we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go. The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly and it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.